Welcome to Life in L.A., a look at people and places in Lower Arkansas, our L.A. Lower Arkansas is made up of the 15 southernmost counties in the state. Join us each week as we talk to some of the people who make this part of the world such an interesting place to live. And now, let's join Life in L.A. with our host, Steve Ford. Well, we have two Fords in the garage today on this issue of Life in L.A. My guest today is Donnell Ford. Donnell, welcome to Life in L.A. Thank you. Life is good in L.A. Oh, it is. It is. It is. Oh, tell us a little bit about who you are and where you're from and about your family before we dig in. Well, my name is Demetrius Donnell Ford. There's another Darnell Ford here, and, but I go by Donnell. Uh, born and raised here in Magnolia, Arkansas. Uh, one of five five children. Uh, I'm the only boy in the family, so uh, I was kind of a little spoiled when I was growing up. Married to Latanya Ford. Tanya and I have been married now for 23 years. In November, it'll be 24 years. Yes, 24 years. Mm. Uh, we raised three boys. Uh, all of them are uh, grown and on their own, paying uh-huh. their own bills. We're happy about that. And uh, two of them blessed us with two grandsons. Uh, matter of fact, keeping one now and taking him home tomorrow because I'm about burned out. Because <laughs> it's, it's a great experience. So, um, Went to school here in Magnolia, graduated here, went to college at Southern Arkansas University as a mule rider. Uh, so just a hometown boy. Mm-hmm. And you've got uh, two primary positions. You're pastor here at Full Faith Community Church. Yes, uh, Full Faith Community Church has been in existence now for two years. And also the mentoring program is going on its third year of existence also. So and that's at uh, Magnolia Public Schools. Magnolia Public School System, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. Mm-hmm. So uh, you you came up through Magnolia Public Schools, played football, is that right? I, I sure did. Um, athletics was a good thing for me uh, back in those days. I, I, I say it was a, an element of some part of my life that saved my life, that God put it in my life to uh, give me some structure, give me some discipline, and football was very good to me. Oh, so you were a Panther? Oh, Panther, still a Panther. Still All a Panther. Panther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have Then did, uh, where'd you go to college? Southern Arkansas, mm-hmm. Southern Arkansas University Mule Rider. So a so, Panther and a Mule Rider. Yeah, so the advantage of that is being home, you get to watch the Panthers, and on weekends you get to watch the Mule Riders. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, that's cool. That's cool. Now, you told me that uh, you also went into the Army. Did 23 years in an Army National Guard. Did uh, two tours of Iraq uh, and served my country in that way. And if mm-hmm. I had to do that again, I want to say to young men, uh, that's an honor and a privilege uh, to serve your country. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got a son in the service. It is. You're right. You're right. So tell me how you how you first knew that, that the Lord was calling you into ministry. Well, it was through the military, actually. Um, I was already a deacon in the church and uh, kind of going through the motion and my responsibilities as the deacon. You know, we can play the role. We can dress it up and we can look mm-hmm. good at it. Mm-hmm. But I hadn't made any real commitment in making any real changes in the ministry. Uh, when I was called to Iraq, I kind of got separated from my unit. Uh, mm-hmm. And I got separated from my family. So it gave me a lot of time to reflect, to think. Uh, first time I ever read my Bible all the way through it, studied it, took notes. Uh, first time I ever listened for the voice of God. Oh, wow. Uh, yes. And um, so uh, God talked to me over there. He he really did. And that's where I got my calling. That's where I preached my first sermon. Mm-hmm. Who was it that affirmed you in that position? I think he gave you a name, didn't he? <laughs> he called me Mighty Man of God, and I'll never forget it because he didn't know who I was. It was the chaplain, and I was standing outside one day, and he passed by me and said, Mighty Man of God, when are you going to accept your calling? Wasn't and that he, the title that the angel gave to uh, Gideon? Mighty Man of, Mighty Mighty man man of God. Of God. Going, yes. Yeah. And um, Well, how would you feel when he called you that? I took it to heart because I had been reading. Mm-hmm. I was, I, I've been really talking to God and asking him to, you know how we do, we want to sign. I, I wanna, oh, yeah. I, I want to know. I, I don't want this. If we're going to make this commitment, is it really you? Is it real? And uh, when God sent by somebody by at that time and, and confirms it, uh, then I really began to take it seriously. I think you told me that uh, your mother recognized that at a young age in you, didn't she? Well, who, who listened to mom at that age? <laughs> 
Uh, she always told me, she said, something, something special about you. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to do great things. You, you're going to preach the word of God. You're going to teach the word of God. But at the time, uh, I just like living in the world. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to do those things. I didn't want to hear about that commitment to God at that point in time. So, so I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. Were you real outgoing as a kid? No, kind of an introvert. Uh, kind of stayed to myself simply because of how life dealt the, that hand to me. Mm -hmm. uh, we was impoverished. Uh, life was hard. Uh, and when life is hard, you kind of stay to yourself. Oh, yeah. You don't understand a lot of things when kids make fun of you because of your haircut. Uh, you got holes in your shoes or your pants are too short or you're wearing your sister's shirt. Things like that is is, is tough. Mm. Um, and at night when you go home and dad has been drinking and he's been fighting mama and things like that, you don't get any sleep. So kind of put me in a shell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you came out of that. Uh, sports helped come out of, to come out of that. Well, most definitely. I'll never forget people like Scott Nipper uh, was my PE teacher, and he saw something in me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave me the necessary tools to get into athletics. And let me tell you something. Back in that day, it was structured. And, man, they gave me a helmet like everybody else. They oh. gave me shoulder pads like everybody else. I had mm -hmm. shoes like everybody else. And I looked like everybody else for a change. Mm. And so nobody was laughing at me then. And so um, I liked it. I liked the structure. I liked the coaches yelling. I liked all that stuff. <laughs> and so I bought into it. Mm -hmm. That's probably why you, you did well in the service also, I guess. Well, yes, I, I wanted the discipline. Uh, a drill instructor is a great man, a great leader. And, and uh, those qualities, those the military instilled in me, it makes me a great father. It makes me a great leader. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been preaching then? been preaching now, I think, going on 13, 13 or 14 years. Yeah, yeah. I know I've heard you a time or two. You got the fire in you, man. You got the fire in you. Where'd you learn to preach? In in Iraq, I guess. In Iraq, but it was a lot of years of things that's already in your heart. And then when God finally gives you a voice, you, you get the opportunity to speak it. Mm -hmm. And so you have it's just, it's just timing. You know, a lot of life experiences, you wonder why you're going through things. God said at the right time, you, you'll be able to use those things. And now it's the time for me to be heard. Back then, it was time to be for me to listen, take it all in. But today is time to be heard. Mm -hmm. I think you said after your your college or your first teaching position or your first coaching position, where was that? Walker Magnolia. Walker Magnolia. Uh, turned the job down five or six times because uh, they wanted me to coach basketball and mm -hmm. I wanted to be a football person. I oh. didn't know anything about basketball. Mm -hmm. I didn't play basketball. But Miss Darlene Shepard was consistent and uh, she finally got me. So I took the job. Uh, did pretty well. Uh, learned a lot. Uh, started a track program there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty successful. Uh, then uh, Bearden Barris called me from Bearden, Arkansas. A guy I was serving in the military with. He was a Hit football coach, and he asked me, did I want to do football? And, of course, oh, I Oh, you had a chance it. to do football then. I had a then. chance to do football. And make some more money. I'm going to tell you something. Oh. My first paycheck at Walker Magnolia was $650 a month. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. oh, oh, And so uh, going to Bearden was a pay raise also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. to take care of my family. You got you to gotta have the, the funds to take care of. Yes, How sure. long were you at Bearden? Stayed there 13 years. Um, still have a home there in Bearden. Still considered home. Every oh. now and then I get a chance. I go by and see my neighbors and people that uh, took care of me and my family for 13 years. Mm -hmm. um, but then Marvin Lindsay, a man that I admired as a coach when I was playing, said, do you want to be a Panther? I said, I've never stopped being a Panther. And he called me home, and I've been coaching here ever since. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did you coach for the Panthers? Oh, oh football, basketball, and track. Oh. And then God blessed me to be the head girls coach the last five years that I was coaching. I was head girls basketball coach. Oh, that's super. That's super. And now this position you've moved into now, tell us a little bit about that. The director of mentorship and intervention. Um, Coaching was getting to a point where uh, I was helping kids. I was old school. The game had changed on me, and I, I wanted to do more for the school system. So I began to visit the main campus up there, and I was watching kids. And I said, I wonder if there's a way I can help all kids like I help basketball players. What if I could be a service and pour to kids like the 18 that I pour into every day and help all kids? And so. 
uh, went to Jessica Reed, which is the high school principal now, but she was an assistant principal. Mm -hmm. And I ran it across her and she thought it was a great idea. And the reason I ran it across her, she's a very bright person. She knows the right thing to do. And she helped me get it all together mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she saw a need also. And so I went and uh, pitched it to Mr. Ward. And first time it was, it was a no-go. Huh. A couple of times it was a no-go. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's the way things start, you know. And I saw the passion that didn't need to be there. So about the third or fourth time, he was like, okay, okay, here's what we do. He said, get it together, pitch it right, sell it to me. And so we did. Mm -hmm. We did. And when we did, he bought into it. He saw the need. And uh, uh, since that day, we've been doing it. Uh, Darnell Ford is one of the mentors. Mar Marcus Jackson uh, was one of the mentors that we had working under me. And we service K-12. And basically uh, what the mentorship does is it's an extension of the classroom. Uh, why is the kid not learning? Mm -hmm. And what a teacher can't do, who can? What resources and what avenues can we hit a, that we can give a kid and services we can give a kid that a teacher just can't do? Mm -hmm. And that's what the mentoring program does. It, you hear so many horror stories today. Uh, I mean, the schools across the nation are having trouble getting bus drivers, and I don't think it's because people can't drive. I think they don't want to put up with the kids. Or you see so many videos of, of kids going in and robbing stores or fighting and, and you just almost lose hope for the next generation. Uh, but mentoring, I suppose, can, can help offset that. It can offset that because uh, mentoring predominantly now, uh, right now we just have male mentors. And mm -hmm. the reason being is, Brother Steve, is that uh, we have a lot of female mentors already there. K through eighth grade, uh, they're all females. Oh, all the teachers. And let me tell you something, yeah. teachers are strong, so they're great mentors. We got a ton of female mentors everywhere in the school system, mm -hmm. but we have no male mentors. Uh, so most students don't even know what a male looks like in a school system until they hit eighth or ninth grade. Yeah, you're right about that. I, I was privileged in my last, where I retired at Central and worked with a lot of, of uh, school teachers, and you hear them. Uh, the love they have for their students and wanting to help, um, but there there are there's some that you can tell there there's a need for intervention that goes maybe beyond what the teacher is able to provide, or if that student is a discipline issue in class. What are some of the uh, what what are some of the problems or the root problems that kids face today? Root problem is is family dynamics, mm -hmm. uh, the structure isn't there anymore. Uh, the father-mother combination is not there no more. Um, discipline isn't there anymore. Poverty is there. Mm. Uh, grandmothers are raising kids. Uh, mothers are very young now and a lack of male presence, period. And so now we see kids that come to school angry. Oh. Uh, because they don't have a father and a mother. We see kids come to school hungry because they don't have food in a household. We see kids come to school sleepy because they sleep in between auntie's house, grandmother's house, and, and mother's house, and grandmother's house. And mm. uh, just a lot going on where that kid, when they come to school, education is the last thing on their mind. Not that they can't be educated, mm -hmm. but that's not the top priority right now. Uh, can you relieve some of these things first? so that I can be educated. And so with the mentoring program, we're able to, uh, we're limitless. We, we can go and do what teachers can't do. Uh, if a student's not coming to class, teachers say, hey coach, I haven't seen uh, Bobby in a week, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I go Bobby house and knock on the door. Hey Bobby, <laughs> we gotta get you to school, buddy. <laughs> and because I've built a relationship with Bobby, Bobby listen to me and he'll come to school, he'll talk to me. I find out Bobby needs something to eat. Bobby comes to school, he sees me first, he gets him a bite to eat. I see Bobby's head is hanging down, so I go talk to Bobby, hey, what kind of day we have and what kind of day do you want to have? So you build relationships that teachers got 25 kids, but I can take Bobby to himself and I can give him a one-on-one -on -one attention and find out the root problem mm -hmm. and help the teacher out. Yeah, yeah, and often it's that, that need for attention. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, I guess, the discipline is a cry for attention or a cry for love or concern. I liked what you told me a while ago about uh, about Marcus 
and the ISS program that he was in, uh, it yeah. said that he looked at those kids differently. Yeah, uh, Mark was a jewel that, that was found into the mentoring program because uh, who you surround yourself with is how successful you're going to be. Uh, it's good to be educated, but it's good just to have the experience. Mark is, is a father. He's a husband. Uh, he's a God-fearing man. He's hardworking, and he believes in humanity. Uh, That's what's lacking in the school system today, that, those qualities. And Marcus was working in the ISS at the junior high for eight years. And when I would always go up to the, when I would have an athlete in ISS and i go check on him, Marcus' room was packed. Oh. Kids, all the discipline problems, all of them. But Marcus, <laughs> you would think he was teaching the best kids in school. I mean, this guy would come to work every day smiling and happy, and he was dealing with all the bad kids. But he treated them with such respect, and he, he put an expectation on them, and he loved them, and he always told them that they could. He did it so much that they would return and come back, not because they liked getting in trouble. They liked what Marcus was giving them. They wanted to be an they ISS. They wanted to be an ISS so they could to be, be with Mr. Jackson. Wow. And he was a father figure. He was strong. and He, he never – the most positive guy I've ever been around. Mm -hmm. I've known him for 10 years and never a negative word out of him. Mm. And that's what those kids was getting every day in ISS. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so when we got the mentoring program, I said, Mr. Ward, he said, who are you going to hire? I said, I want Marcus Jackson. He said, who? I said, you wouldn't know who he was. <laughs> I said, he's an ISS teacher mm -hmm. in junior high. He said, Coach, why him? I said, he hits all the features. Mm -hmm. He's going to stand before those kids and before the school system and he's going to be a quality man. You won't have to worry about him. He's going to do his job. I trust him because he's a, his wife trusts him, his children trust him, and his church trusts him, and we can trust him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. We need that sort of a relationship with somebody who is well-founded, don't we? And I guess kids look up to that. And then the way that society or teachers or we as adults look at children, we have a way of looking at, you know, you, you label a kid, he's he's the troublemaker. And yet, he's the one that needs attention, isn't he? Yes. Each year in a mentoring program, a kid starts over. And so I got a file on the kid, and the teacher said, well, next year you're going to get him. No. He gets a chance to start all oh. over again. Now, I'm not saying that I won't have a chance to mentor him, but he's going to have to uh, be referred to me. He's going to have a half chance. And you know what? There are times that kids will come to me and say, Coach, uh, can I come back into the mentoring program? Mm -hmm. I see myself slipping, and they come back on their own. But I tell the teacher, you know, each year kids grow. Things change, you know, and so we got to give a chance, a kid a chance, an opportunity uh, to have success on their own. And by doing that, we say, hey, let's see how much you've grown. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, there go that kid that needed help last year, surely he needs some help this year. But maybe we did enough and put enough in that kid that they decided to come this year and they could do some things on their own. You know, in, we, we talked earlier, you can't really change the home situation where the child sleeps, how much food they have. In some ways, aren't you just putting a Band-Aid on these problems? Most definitely. But what would it be without the Band-Aid? Mm. It would be an open wound that gets worse. Mm -hmm. So at least if we cover it with the Band-Aid for the time being until they can get to real help or uh, can find better help, uh, sometimes that Band-Aid can hold strong enough to, to keep it from getting infected more. And then that child can can grow and improve and, yes. and not need quite the attention. Funny thing you said is that kids come from what they come from, and when they come to school, they try to make our environment match their environment. A oh. kid is in school more than they're at home. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are in the summer for three months. We got them the other nine months. And so what a kid wants to do, they want to come to school and make it look as comfortable and as close to home as they can get it because they figure, hey, I'm going to be here a long time. Mm -hmm. So let's tear it up. Let's dirty it up. Mm -hmm. Let's graffiti it up. Let's smoke it up. Let's cuss it up. Let's make, make it this like place home. And I challenge teachers in ourselves, let's fight to make it our home. Mm -hmm. Let's change the structure. Don't give it up. But over the course of the year, kids most likely went out. 
if we could ever get the kids to adapt to our environment and keep it that way, then kids that come from a bad environment can at least say, when I get to school, at least I got something positive there. Mm. But they fight so hard to make it like home because that's all they know. So as teachers, we got to fight harder to make it better than home so they can say, there is a different way of seeing things. There is a different culture. There is a different environment. But it's tough. It, it takes strong people to change culture. Yeah, yeah. I think we're blessed here in L.A., at least in Magnolia and the school districts I know of, the, to, to have a good body of teachers. Uh, it's tough to be a teacher, isn't it? It, is. it takes a special person to be a teacher. And when the government and society recognize that, they'll pay them better. They're recognizing better and they're honored them better because regardless of what the school system look like today, mm -hmm. it's the best thing still going. Regardless of what's going on in the world, the school system is the best place for kids. Oh, yeah. It yeah. is. And so often the, the school systems tie the hands of teachers and, and uh, but yeah, give them the money they need and a little bit of freedom too so that they're not, you often hear what well, we have to teach this way. Right. Now you're asking a teacher to do this. Go to school, get your degree in science, history, and math. Be a great teacher. By the way, when you get there, can you be a mother? Mm. Can you be a father? Can you be a custodian? Can you be a doctor? Can you be a mentor? Can you be a counselor? Can you be a provider? Can you be a resource? Everything else along the way. By the way, can you do that? And don't forget to teach that science. <laughs> That's what we ask in teachers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But they only work eight to three, five <laughs> days a week, and they're off all summer. Isn't that right? Oh, let me tell you something. <laughs> Listen, I didn't mean it. <laughs> I threw that out there to discuss. I can hear the teachers lining up on you me You better now. believe, buddy. Yeah. But that time, they're doing professional development, mm -hmm. trying to find time to be with their family and loved ones yeah. that they don't get trying to recuperate so they can make it through another year. Let me tell you something. I work with the most amazing people every day. Mm. I put my work hat on every day for teachers. Oh, yeah. They are amazing. And without them, uh, I know it's a tough place because society in the world is a tough place. Yeah. Without that school system, it'll be, a, it'll be tough. Mm. So what does the future hold for mentoring and some of those difficult students? I speak this into existence because mm -hmm. I believe that we speak things into the atmosphere. One day in Magnolia, Arkansas, when they talk about the school system, they will never forget to talk about the mentoring program, oh. that the difference that it made in kids' lives. That we want you to come to Magnolia Public School. What do you have that I don't have? Have you heard about our mentoring program? Have you heard about how these men and these women in this program is helping kids and saving lives. So that's my goal for the mentoring program is that we be a significant part. We be a necessity, just like math, just like English, just like history, just like science, just like sports, that we're needed just as much. Mm, that is, that's a, that's a great way to wind things up, uh, a positive view for the future. And it is a great thing for, our school system that we've got this mentoring program and it gives you the freedom too. I think you had told me that, that you're not tied down to a desk. If you need to go look for a student or if you have to run, pick up something at Walmart. The, the, the one thing I had to commend Mr. Ward on is that he allowed me the opportunity to have some freedoms that a lot of people don't. I work on the high school campus. Mm -hmm. Marcus worked on the junior high campus. Darnell worked on the central campus and each one of those buildings had principals. Well, we come under their authority, but we don't work side by side them and give us a, a little more freedom to go where they can't go. Mm -hmm. So if a mm -hmm. principal say, hey, coach, there's a kid that need a ride to school. Hey, coach, there's a kid that uh, needs a resource from here or there. We can go get it. We're not tied to a classroom. We're not tied to a set schedule. We can go and come. Uh, and Mr. Ward trusts us. He knows that we're going to do it. We're not going to take advantage of it. Hey, we go. <laughs> when when they tell us there's a problem and we have to go, we go. Mm -hmm. And I thank uh, Magnolia for having a, a superintendent that sees that that's needed. 
Because if you limit us to that campus, we're very ineffective. Mm -hmm. There are people that want to give and help us with resources, but we got to go out and get it. If I'm in the classroom, I can't go get it. Got parents that we go over to the housing, we sit and we talk to. Mm. There are times that we go, kids aren't coming to school and a mentor will go and talk to the grandmother or talk to the student where the principal can't do it. We can do it. Or the teacher can't do it. We'll do it. We go with teachers on visit. There are some places in Magnolia teachers are not go. Mm. And I'm from here and I know where those places are. Yeah. And when they see me with the teacher or I'm coming, I've been such a relationship in the community. They're like, that's Mr. Ford. He, he's good. Oh. And I wouldn't want some of the teachers to go in some of the places that, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. some of our kids are. You know, it's just not safe, yeah. unfortunately. And so with the mentoring program, we're able to cover every avenue. We, uh, we've we got the, uh, the goal for Mr. Ward to do what we have to do to win kids. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes doing things outside of the box. Right. Yeah. Well, well Coach Ford, Magnolia <laughs> Public Schools is fortunate to have you. Pastor Ford, Full Faith Community Church is blessed to have you also. And I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and have this visit this morning. I want to say this about Full Faith and the Magnolia Public School System. As much as they're fortunate to have me, I feel just as fortunate to serve them. Wow. It keeps me honest. It keeps me strong. It keeps me going. It, it gives me a sense of purpose being a pastor of Full Faith Community Baptist Church and being a mentor in the Magnolia Post. We all need mentors also, don't we? Yes, we do. We do. Yes, we do. Great. All right. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thanks for listening to Life in L.A. Feel free to contact us at steveford at gmail.com if you have a suggestion for a future topic. And as always, tell others about this podcast and share it on your favorite social media. You've been listening to Life in L.A., a production of Steve Ford Photography.